Jer Casey is the founder and principal tutor of the Kinesiology College of Ireland. She's been a practicing kinesiologist since 1992, having trained extensively with many of the world's top kinesiologists in Ireland and abroad. She is a registered Touch for Health instructor with the International Kinesiology College since 1995 and has been the IKC faculty for Ireland since 2002. She teaches in Ireland, Spain, the Netherlands, and Finland. Jura is currently the president of the IKC and has served on the executive board of the International Kinesiology College Australia since 2009. She was the Dean of the Personal Development School of the IKC from January 2009 until October 2020. She served three years as the Dean for Touch for Health School from January 20, um, no, 2009. She is faculty for Wellness Kinesiology and has been a registered Prana instructor since 1999. Busy life, Jer. In the last two years, she has been teaching the beautiful work of Sylvia Marina, for the Healing Arts Academy. Jer started the first diploma in Ireland in 1998 to raise the standard of kinesiology training here in Ireland. She runs a two-year diploma in kinesiology and a one-year advanced diploma. She also teaches community workshops for people to use with their families and friends. Jer studied naturopathy with Gateways College of Naturopathy in California and then undertook a Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. She's extensively researched the effects of emotional stress release on blood pressure and the personality traits of adult adoptees. Jer is the author and presenting tonight, today, Colour Matters. Jer, welcome. We just bursting to hear from you. Thank you for the introduction. I'm delighted to be here and I'm thrilled that Coloured Matters is finally in the PDS. Colour Matters is all about colour is, and that it matters to us. And this is what happens when we see rainbows. We light up and we love the colour spectrum. Colour affects us in all different ways. And colour is simply light of different wavelengths and frequencies. And light is just one form of energy that's made up from photons. And we are all surrounded by electromagnetic waves of energy and which color is only one small part. In fact, this is the visible light frequency that we see. This is the electromagnetic spectrum and you can see it goes from gamma waves to radio waves. And the, what we can see is so tiny in the grand scheme of everything is just that visible thing of what we would know as the rainbow. And it was Isaac Newton who was the first person that proved that color was made or light was made up of seven colors. And that was what we call the, the spectrum, or as we know, it's just the rainbow. And he did this by putting white light through glass and the glass bent the, color, the light and therefore changed the wavelengths and frequencies, giving us the seven colors that we know as the rainbow or the color spectrum. Interestingly enough, if you do this with two, pieces of glass and you cross those two rainbows, you get back to white light. And if you want to have a bit of fun with this, you can do this with your with some torches. And this is called color by addition. So if you take three torches and you cover them with a red, green and blue filter and put them in a dark room, put them on a white wall and it needs to be a white wall. Otherwise, you get different reaction. You'll get the full color spectrum. You might need another person to help you hold the uh, the torches or one of them. But our cones in our eyes only have three receptors. They can only see red, green, and blue. So from those colors, by addition, we can see the all the color spectrum. And if anybody remembers the old TVs with the huge big back on them with the tubes, the tubes were actually red, green, and blue. And yet we got color TV and saw everything. So in this course, I look at the seven major chakras, and I know there's more chakras in the body, but there are seven major ones that we concentrate on those. And I also look at the seven bodies. This is the bodies of our aura, if you like, and our energy field, and they're made up seven bodies. And what fascinates me is that if you test in each different body, you'll get completely different results. So for instance, if you do a simple touch for health, 
uh, 14 muscle bounds and do it in physical body and then do it in etheric and emotional and mental body, you actually can often get muscles that work in one body don't work in the other. Some that, you know, that, that unlock in one body don't unlock in another. So it was fascinating to me. So our seven bodies are your physical body. This is the one we touch and can see the etheric body, which is just outside it. This is where we sense things. That's where you get, you know, the sense of something happening or a sense of somebody standing behind you. It's very much etheric body. The emotional body is outside that. And that doesn't do a whole lot except feel, which I know is a lot. But if I was to say to you all, give me the emotion of happy, how would you do it? Well, the chances are you'd have to think about something happy and then you could feel the happy. So mental body then controls our emotional body. So the, the thoughts control our feelings. And outside that, then we have the three spiritual bodies. We have the broken into the buddhic, which means enlightenment, the atmic, which is the radiation from a central point and the monad, which is the higher mind consciousness of the self. And each body likes different foods and different nourishments. So I just want to share that with you. So the physical body likes food. That would be good, healthy, nutritious food. The healthier and more vibrant it is, the healthier and vib more vibrant our bodies are. The etheric body likes singular homeopathy particularly. The emotional body particularly likes flower essences and flower essences have long term been associated with the emotional states the mental body likes crystals and gems and this can be used through essences or wearing crystals or keeping them in your pocket or maybe having a larger piece in a room beside you that will change the energy and they change our moods and each of these remedies also vibrate in different color spectrums so different different crystals will have different wavelengths and frequencies spiritual body likes two different things it likes essential oils pure essential oils but it also likes sound and it's believed that sound is the most powerful um, remedy if you like because it cuts right through all the bodies into physical body from the spiritual body and it it helps you we can actually physically feel the vibration normally of sound and all of the the notes would have a different wavelength and vibration that relates to colors um, when I was in university, I had the opportunity of working uh, with a spectrum photometer and I got to measure some food. So I'm going to show you a rainbow of food. We could do this with flower essences or gems or anything, but I'd like to do it with food for today. So <clears throat> this is parsley, this beautiful green uh, parsley that some of us would have in our gardens um, and often see it in our plates. Um, looks green to the eye but when you measure it it's actually red so it measures in the red spectrum so i'm going to just show you the foods that are in the different spectrums of the rainbow this is chicken and pasta both looking kind of fairly white but when you measure them they're actually orange this is butter and butter is one of the foods that's in the yellow spectrum and it looks yellow most dairy is in the yellow spectrum apart from buttermilk which vibrates at magenta this is beef, um, which looks a brown red color, but it actually vibrates in green. This is our carrots. All of us know the orange carrots, but carrots are actually vibrating in the blue spectrum. And seemingly they came from the Middle East originally, and they were a blue purple vegetable. And you can still get those blue purple carrots in certain uh, green grocers. You'll see them and they would appear to be more near the original carrot that we knew. This is a banana, which to our eye looks yellow on the outside, but it vibrates in indigo, as does honey and tomatoes, by the way. And finally, our lovely red apple vibrates in the violet spectrum. So what we're looking at and what we're eating at, I saw a course one time saying, if you need a color, eat a color. And if you need red, eat a tomato. Tomatoes do not vibrate in red. So it was really interesting to see that the vibration and what we see by the naked eye are completely different. So what we cover in this course, we look at the history of color, interested in Newton's discoveries and also Paracelsus, the frequencies and wavelengths and how they affect different colors, how we see color and how it affects us, and how um, 
chakras and their related frequencies and their relations to organs and glands, um, how to work with and change into the seven different energy bodies. And we do this using hand modes um, to do this. And this has been really fascinating that the chakras in some bodies will be in balance and in others won't. We look at how to balance the chakras using color in all the subtle bodies, and that would be through the flower essences, foods, um, and that. And how to determine the energy of the body, the overall body. So we do it by the seven bodies, by the seven chakras, and we get a number that gives you the vibration that you're at. And this helps you then to, um, if you're working with clients, to um, see six months later, if you do it again, how, are they improving and are they getting more value? Uh, and is their energy getting better than it was previously? Uh, we look at how to find your constitutional color. We all have a constitutional color. Um, mine happens to be turquoise, which I am wearing today, or a lot of it. Um, and we also have a, a secondary color that, that will be back up, and we'll have a, a tertiary color that is your immediate color that you need right now. And um, sometimes those colors are colors we don't like because they challenge us for the immediate ones. Constitutional color is probably one that you keep going back to anyway. Um, I also look at how to make your own essences with color and sound and crystals and flowers because tests get some really expensive and sometimes you can just make your own from your garden or from just color, colored glass or, and it's quite easy to make them or with crystals and sound. So the next course is coming up in November. It's on the 4th and 5th, it's a two day. And um, course in Cashel uh, in Tiffany. So thank you. And thank you for listening. And do you have any questions? Jer, yeah, that's incredible. And it's amazing work that you do and the study that you did so long ago. And now to bring it in and have it as um, it's an accredited course. So for everybody's ongoing education that you needed. Uh, you know now that you can go to the personal development school and find this course on colour matters um, that Jer has, has created. So any questions for Jer? I'm fascinated with this. Any questions, please? Earl. I just say it looks very interesting. Uh, uh, I would like to take it right now. Um, so uh, good job. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Jer. That's the word I wrote down here on your presentation. Fascinating. It is fascinating. Um, I'm really curious about the foods and the fact that they're not the color we see. They're not vibrating on the color we see. So is there a list of like uh, all the colors or is that some work that you've just done? I know you described how you, we, um, you found out what color they're vibrating on. Yes, I, 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 we, we find the vibrations. Angela Bermadsen also did some work on the color foods and so did Child and Deal. And we've actually incorporated all of that into the course. Oh, so fantastic. There's a lot, yeah, there's a lot. So we have lists. Yeah, there's lists, colors, yeah. You know, and you've got, you know, things that you wouldn't expect, you know. Yeah. Um, like pasta's orange and pork is orange, but beef is green, you know, and... Do you generally find the, the the say if it's a food that vibrates the the color the color that it's vibrating on not the color it looks like is the color related to say to the chakra like would it yeah. be the one that's vibrating orange will be work on the orange chakra that sort of thing? No, actually, I found the opposite. I found that if say you have um, a chakra out, let's say the gonad chakra, which would vibrate mm -hmm. normally in orange, you may need blue for it, or you may need yellow okay. or red. So it's actually to bring it into balance. So my belief systems would say that the chakras actually have all of the colors in each of them and that there's a predominant color that vibrates at it. But sometimes if the chakra's out of balance, it's not its own color mm -hmm. that it needs. It can be a different color. Yeah, that's really interesting. Oh my gosh, there could be a lot of <laughs> conversations. Thank you. I so Jane, I'm, I'm fascinated with it, Jo. And... Um, Several years ago, there was um, a, I just forget the name of the course. However, for children that were hyperactive, it was about taking certain colored vegetables and fruits from out of their diet. To And research was even done about 
having them sit on a certain colored chair at school and it would help to settle down their hyperactivity. What's your, do you know anything about this or? Well, yeah, the, the, there's definitely um, colors that would be, um, that make us more active, like particularly the warm colors, like the reds, yellows and oranges make us more active. They're not a good color, for instance, to have in a bedroom. Um, a lot of bedrooms seem to be, I mean, when I bought this house, all the bedrooms were yellow. Um, and until we changed the color, I wasn't I wasn't sleeping in yellow, but it it, it because it creates an activity. And um, they also say for babies, particularly, you should have everything should be white for as long as you can do it. Um, I know in the Bible, there's a, ref a reference to take the baby and put it in swaddling clothes. And I looked at what swaddling clothes was and seemingly they were white, white lengths of garments. Um, and that's because when the baby is born, the top of the head is still, uh, you know, very sensitive uh, because it, it hasn't closed properly. And it, it can it can absorb the color, and if so, particularly hats on babies should always be white on small babies, so that you're not actually putting any particular frequency in. Because white is the presence of all color, black will be the absence of all color. But so that white is particularly good, and the baby's rooms, for instance, should be in a peachy pink color, which is the same color as the womb and what they see in the womb so that it keeps them safe, you know. So I don't know where the blue for the boy and the pink for the girl came in at some stage because I believe re previous to that, it used to be the opposite way. It was blue for girls for Our Lady and pink for St. Joseph. You know, if you look at a Catholic point of view, but from religious point of view, you know, they had it the other way around. So I don't know where this came from, but they say, you know, if you keep it similar to what they see in the womb, which is a peachy pink, they'll actually feel much more secure. Um, so yes, there is, and and the active colors um, would be more active for kids that have ADHD, ADHD. So you're better off with the cooling uh, white or, or pale blues or pale greens that are a calming and set, sedative colors. Mm. But does that answer your question? <laughs> uh, yes, it does, except that I know that when the, we were encouraged to take certain colored foods uh, out of the diets of children that were hyperactive. But in actual fact, maybe it was a total different color that we needed to move rather than the one that was a visual as yeah. a red tomato, because that's not the true color yeah. of what it is. No, it's indigo. Most, if you want red, most leafy green vegetables are red, vibrating red. Mm, that's fascinating. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. We have a hand up here. Makina, do you have a question? Just now when you explain regarding about the food colors, right? So how do we know that uh, we need what type of color, you know? Like example, metals, then we should use crystal, you know? I think we're attracted to them. Okay. I think, I think sometimes, even in the clothes we wear, sometimes you put something on that's perfectly okay and you don't feel okay in it and you change because it doesn't feel right. So I think our intuition will also guide us to the right colors and probably to the right foods. Right, right. If we use the wrong color, will it harm anyone? Can you use the wrong color? Yeah. I think where you're most likely to do that is with young babies if you put very strong colors on their head. Um, I think adults, you know, will, will survive them quite well. Um, we just won't feel right in them. But um, and sometimes you can feel uncomfortable in a room if it's not a color that's vibrating with you. But um, we will we'll use all the spectrum at some stage. But um, you know, I think for 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 um, say if you're using clinics or therapy rooms or that, you're probably better to stay in neutral so that you're not imposing any color on a person. Ina, so McNeena, thank you so much. Um, Irene has a question. It's more of a comment, Joe. I'm just fascinated at the amount of correspondences that you have between color and other things which have a similar frequency or which match the frequencies. Um, I'm just absolutely fascinated and gobsmacked that at the quantity of different things that, that you've put together to reinforce the frequency of the color. So, um, yeah, that must have been a fascinating, re a lot of research to go into getting all of that together. 
Yes, it was. It was amazing. Um, and it, it came from when my son was born with a, a very a serious liver disease and he had to be in blue light and we had to measure the light because if it went out of the blue spectrum, he didn't he didn't lift the bilirubin out of his system. So I knew color had healing properties from when he was tiny. Wow. Goodness. That is so good. Your two-day course on Color Matters, is that online or is that in your school in Ireland? Well, it's in my school in Ireland, definitely in November. But I saw the message from Suzette through the code. Um, is it online? And it can be online if the people that want to take it are already uh, comfortable with muscle testing. If they've at least done touch valve one and possibly two, um, we could do it online for a group, absolutely. Wow. You probably would need two people in a room, though. Do you know what I mean? To do it, because you do need somebody to work on. It's not something you could take on Zoom on your own. It, you'd need to have at least two people in a room so you can work together with the frequencies. Okay. Okay. Mm. But so, it, that's a possibility. <laughs> So for anyone who is interested in doing Color Matters and it's not convenient for you to travel to Ireland in November, then please um, let us know, let Jer know, uh, so that we can look at doing um, a course online. That'd be great. Oh, this is uh, exciting. Yes. Um... <laughs> One reason that uh, I'm so fascinated in this, I don't know if you saw, I was just playing around a little bit with um, with colors in here and in my room. Um, I can see that. It's, uh, I'm using programmable LEDs and been doing a lot with uh, trying to set the, um, uh, the mood of rooms. And this really started off when I was doing um, online and trying to get my lights all, uh, you know, the, the, the best uh lighting and everything and so i'm very fascinated with what uh you are doing and also as far as nutrition uh i'd always told uh, my students uh, to eat a colorful diet uh but the colors then was just, it was meant to show that to have a variety of uh nutrition uh but now we see that uh <laughs> there's a variety of um uh of frequencies and so uh, that takes on a, a different meaning. Uh, so that's that's very interesting. Thank you. It does. And interestingly, with your lights, uh, we also did an experiment with plants and photosynthesis. And we discovered that if you put plants, you're plants in, green, in blue light, they take up more pho photosynthesis than they do in white light or other, uh, or other colors. Interesting. Interesting. This is so fascinating. This is so fascinating. So, Jer, thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you have got this course accredited with the Personal Development School. And so anybody who's looking at um, ongoing uh, education, they need their CPE points. Fascinating. Still so much to learn. Some of us have been in kinesiology for many, many years and feel as if we've hardly even started uh, it, when we start looking at colors and so many um, emotions and things to learn all the time. Mm -hmm.